Of course, we have a lot of quantities that are shared between these three classifications. So, what we mean by return? Return refer to delivery at less than 37 unit gestations. This is considered premature. What about the weight of the newborn? Here we talk about counting of the weeks of gestation. Less than 37 weeks of gestation considered preterm, regardless the weight. Term gestation and is the our goal to make pregnancy ranking in this part of classification because the term newborn complain from a less complication in comparison to others. So term gestation refer to delivery at 38 to less than 42 weeks gestation completed. This is a term, term pregnancy, of course, complain from less complication in comparison to others. Post-term gestation refer to delivery at or after 30 weeks of gestation. Of course, this part or type of newborn not free from complications in spite of post date term. Neonatal period? All of us hear about the neonatal period. What we mean by the neonatal period is defined as the first 28 days or four weeks of life for the term infant. Although, from the practical standpoint, it is extended in case of premature delivery baby, because we have a lot of things that make the premature maybe differ from that term baby. So keep this in mind. So when you think about the neonatal period, we talk about the first month of newborn after birth, after birth. Here we take a general idea about the fetal and neonatal growth. Fetal growth. Fetal growth rate is about five grams per day at the first trimester, especially at the end of the first trimester of gestation. Then it increases to up to 10 grams per day at 20 weeks that to say in the second trimester of pregnancy. And then the highest rate of growth, 30 gram per day at the first weeks of the thr third trimester of gestations. Then after that, the growth start to be slow after 37 weeks of gestations. So the maximum growth in utero in between 32 to 34 weeks of gestation. This is regarding the fetal growth in utero. After birth, the neonatal growth, there is a loss of weight. Why? Due to loss of extracellular water and suboptimal caloric intake. Term infant lose about 5% of their birth weight, while preterm infant lost up to 15 of their birth weights. Why this difference between term and preterm? Due to water containing of the newborn to be term or preterm. So the family sometimes asks you, the weight of my baby start to be reduced. Of course, this is a normal, normal phenomenon after birth. After that, 
term infants gain their birth weight by the end of the first week of life and thereafter gain about 30 to 40 grams per day. Of course, this is regarding the normal growth if the newborn didn't suffer from certain complications. This is a normal outcome or growth after birth. Of course, before the birth of the newborn, you should prepare certain equipment or space or room to receive this new human being. So you should prepare delivery room. Delivery room should be ready to receive uh, such new human being. So what are the goals of delivery room management? Of course, first assess and promptly attend the immediate needs, of course, of the newborn. Oxygenation, ventilation. Of course, after birth and after we cutting the umbilical cord, immediately the newborn should depend on himself. So, oxygenation and ventilation critical art of the assistant team that received the newborn. So, assess oxygenation and ventilation first, then pass to assess the serious anomalies that may be associated with this birth. This is number one. So, we give ventilation and oxygenation priority to first in our station. B, physical out and equipment. The new station R should be in immediate proximity to the delivery room. Delivery room or the room of sister should be nearby. It should have adequate lighting and space for the personal and equipment for the station, including bed with radiant warmer. So the room should be suitable for the movement of the staff or the team of the process station and so enough to be occupied all the recitation equipment that may be needed for newborn recitation. Preparation for delivery. So important for you to be aware about the conditions that related to the newborn and that may affect the state of the newborn that may need immediate intervention. So, obtaining perinatal information, the pediatrician must have specific information concerning the mother and the fetus to prepare for routine care of the mother and the newborn, as well as treatment of specific problem related to the particular delivery. So you should anticipate the problems that may occur in the newborn if you know the condition or disease that the mother suffering from. For example, if the mother is complaining from the diabetes, so you should know in certain knowledge about the complications or need of the newborn after delivery. So you should arrange 
your action in this way. So obtaining perinatal information so critical for your action regarding the newborn. So obstetric history, what are the conditions that you should know and that you expected to affect the newborn in some uh, complications that may occur or follow the birth. So information should be taken and the best information should be taken from a obstetrician and the medical chart and by direct communication with their parents, so important. So, important issue should include the following. Of course, this condition considered to be a risk factor for the newborn. So you should aware about any complication that may follow as such maternal problems. Maternal age, of course, young or old age group concern risk factor. Medical and previous obstetric history should be taken in detail. Length of gestation, Ready group and compatibilities, maternal ultrasound evaluation of the fetal growth and amniotic fluid volume or congenital anomalies. Besides sign of chorioaminitis, including prolonged rupture of the fetal membrane, maternal fever and leukocytosis, all of these should be <clears throat> mentioned in the cast sheet of the mother at the delivery room that you should take a rapid or idea about these complications that may associate with uh, such conditions. Labor history should include fetal heart tracing, duration of the fetal rupture, Evaluation of the amniotic fluid, color and quantity, progress of labor and fetal blood pH. This information should be registered in the case sheet of pediatrician. Here we take about the station team. General idea, personnel and their task, the value type of delivery that is anticipated. So, high risk group deliveries include maternal diabetes, RH and ABO compatibilities, preterm delivery at less than 37 weeks, post term delivery at more than 32 weeks, multiple gestation, maternal bleeding, <clears throat> preeclampsia. Intrauterine growth retardation, fetal anomalies, pre-presentation, cesarean delivery, and fetal distress. Each of these conditions in need for special personnel to deal with its complication. So high risk team include at least four personnel needed for a, such a high risk group. Team leader to direct recitation and direct and institute airway management. Second, to assess heart rate and to initiate cardiac compression if needed. Third one, to assess the drying, suctioning, ventilation, and prepare drug for injection. And the fourth one, to keep intravenous access and to administer drugs. So we need at least four personnel in high risk group. And that's so why we say the room of staying should be wide 
and suitable for the movement of the team to be ready and to be assess all the complications that might happen. Equipment for station include airway management, suctioning pump with regulator, DD suction, catheter, oral airway with different sizes, and the tracheal tube, the endoscope, suction, catheter. This is important. This is, of course, uh, Ambubac, important to be familiar with the shape of the this instrument simple and effective this uh, sucker to clear the secretion from the mouth according to the presence or absence of a such material this is the tracheal tube important in advance of recitation of course this is oral airway that may be needed if resuscitation. Need for further management. Ventilation oxygenation so important. Oxygen source, ask for differences, back with oxygen reservoir, travenal access, umbilical catheter, instrument for umbilical cut down, and saline solution. Drugs that should be available in the delivery room management, epinephrine, plasma volume expander, sodium bicarbonate, or naloxone. So all of these should be, should be available at the room of delivery, especially if you inform that the delivery may deliver for a risky mother, risky mother. So all of these, investigations or instrument so important for your action. This is of course the large scope. Large scope can you use if resuscitation need for a such instrument with the tracheal tube. Next subject, after the newborn, you need to assess the well-being of the newborn. The newborn suffer from certain problem or all things pass smoothly. So, how we assess an immediate practical way the well being of the newborn? So, the goal of initial is to determine the newborn state of oxygenation and ventilation. This is important for us because, because if the newborn failure to take effective, spontaneous breathing, my patient may pass in a state of birth asphyxia. So you should interfere immediately to be in place to assess oxygenation and ventilation. This is usually done by performing abbreviated APCAR score evaluation, APGAR score evaluation. So APGAR score component from the five letters. Each of these letters may represent a certain word. For example, A for appearance of the newborn, P for the pulse, G for agreements or response to the nasal nostril, A activity, and R respiration. So this table represents the 
Apgar score. So we have, <coughs> sorry, we have a five variables or five signs that should be checked immediately after birth. So heart rate, respiratory rate, muscle tone, respond to the catheter, and skin color, this should be assessed immediately. Each of these variables may contain three scores, zero, one, or two. According to this, according to this table, you should collect and give score for each finding that you should assess. Of course, you should well-trained, well-trained to be familiar with the usage of a such table. This is a practical point, and this should be well-known by the doctor and the nurses in the intensive care unit of the new board. So doctors and nurses should be aware how to use. For example, so as we say, Abgar's score evaluation should be assessed at first minute of birth, immediately at birth, and then repeated after five minutes. According to the situation, the evaluation may be assessed later on at 10 minutes or even at 20 minutes after birth, according to the situation or state of the newborn. So these five signs should be inserted in the chart and then collect the upcard score of the newborn. Of course, score is obtained by adding all individual scores. For example, If my patient with heart rate less than 100, percent, 100 beats per minute, of course, my patient take one. And if the respiration weak and irregular, take also one. If my patient with some flexion, take one. Agreements just respond to the answer, take one. Body pink, extremities blue, take one. So. Here we collect five points or five score of Abgar score and so on. So Abgar score of eight to 10 reflect good oxygenation and ventilation and indicate no need for vigorous resuscitation. And that's good action for you. That means everything going within normal and everything passed smoothly. If the total of Abgar score from five to seven indicate need for stimulation and supplemental oxygen. Of course, scars, score less than five indicate a need for assisted ventilation and possible cardiac support. And this is the point that you should be ready to help the newborn to take first breathing and oxygenation. Here, your job to be interfered in the right time to save the newborn from the birth asphyxia. And you know the birth asphyxia is a disaster for the newborn. Why? Because it's affect the brain, and then you get a crippled human being. So be aware about these scores. So collectively speaking, it's a useful method of communication with well-being of the newborn. 
However, urgently needed restraint should not be delayed while a full examination is performed. Bradycardia or poor respiratory effort alone indicate a need for immediate resuscitation. So, as we say, we have five variables of the APGAR score. And the most important two of these five is assess the heart rate and the respiratory rate. Of course, other important, but the most important, assess the heart rate and the respiratory rate because oxygenation, oxygenation, our goal for the newborn to be resumed in perfect way. The blood score at five minutes reflects the adequacy of resuscitation and the degree of perinatal asphyxia and predict next future sequel. As you know, APGAR score should be taken on the first minute. First minute, the APGAR score may be low. But if this APGAR score is still low at the five minutes, that indicates something going in incorrect way. And this predict next futures that, of course, appear immediately or later on. So, assessment of girls for at five minutes, so important for us. So, resuscitation. You, this is your job immediately after birth. The purpose is to re-oxygenate the CNS of the newborn by providing oxygen, establishing the ventilation, and showing adequate cardiac output. Although it may be difficult to differentiate primary apnea from secondary apnea, a quick assessment of the newborn skin color, respiratory activity, heart rate should be good during resuscitation. Of course, a primary apnea, the newborn delivered without taking a breathing. Secondary apnea may happen after a few minutes when the child starts to take few respiratory movements and then because of asphyxia start to be apneic again. What are the routine procedures that should be taken? The evaluation and procedures that constitute the resuscitation of the newborn are listed in order in which they should be initiated. So, you start with the important mean treatment and then followed by others. Of course, all of these lines of treatment are important to be given to the newborn, but of course, maintenance of the body heat, so important. The newborn should be dried, of course, dryness of the newborn should be cleaned by sterile plants or by any other covering that should be sterile in the premature unit. When reached to the room of the station, it should be contain a radiant heat. This to maintain body temperature. It is important to avoid hypothermia. Hypothermia may increase the oxygen consumption and energy and even for hypoglycemia. And as you know, the newborn containing a few energies and if exposed to abnormal condition like cold may start to lose a lot of energy and of course may pass the hypoglycemia. 
And hypoglycemia also causes to be a disaster in the newborn. Immediately may result in brain damage. Then establishment of the airway. Immediately after delivery, the infant should be placed in neutral or slightly extended position. And the airway established by clearing of the mouth from secretion by a sucker that we mentioned before. The mouth, the nose, and pharynx of thick secretion or meconium should be cleared immediately before initiation of oxygenation and ventilation. Because if you start oxygenation and ventilation before clearance of the airway, all of the secretion start to be the down the bronchioles, especially small bronchioles, and close these bronchioles and result for severe asphyxia. So first, you should clean the mouth from the secretion and meconium. Deep and frequent oropharyngeal suction should be avoided because it will increase the vagal output causing apnea and bradycardia and bradycardia. Of course, important for you, it's not important to aspirate or sucking the stomach content of the newborn because the calcium content will be passed in a normal, usual way to the small intestine. So your job just to clean the airway passage, not the stomach, not the stomach. Ventilation so important to be assessed and to be taken in consideration. Ventilation is adequate. Of course, if ventilation is adequate, supplemental oxygen may be given to improve the heart rate or skin color. Skin color important to be noted. Of course, peripheral cyanosis considered normal in newborn, that we call acrocyanosis. Acrocyanosis considered normal in the newborn. But the most important to assess the lips and the tongue, mostly the tongue, should be assessed for the cyanosis. So a ventilation in this a group of adequate ventilation just add oxygen. If supplemental oxygen does not improve the heart rate or skin color, or of the ventilation, any mechanical ventilation should be initiated. Don't delay, because in your bone, not like adult, so sensitive to the hypoxia that may result in severe brain damage. So be aware about this complication. If spontaneous ventilation improves, mechanical ventilation should be stopped and supplemental oxygen resumed. If the response is poor, or if the airway obstruction occurs, endotracheal tube that we mentioned before should be inserted and mechanical ventilation continued. So, the action of the team, of course, modified according to the state of the newborn regarding ventilation. Circulation should be assessed, important. If mechanical ventilation does not improve the heart rate or skin color, one of the following steps should be taken. If the heart rate is less than 60 or 80 minutes and not improving, cardiac compression is initiated of the lower third of the sternum at a rate of 90 compression per minute. 
the ratio of the compression to ventilation is th three to one. So here you should give 30 breathe for 90 compressions. As you know, heart rate more than the respiratory rate. So resuscitation goes with this fact. The breathing less than compression. If the heart not improve, epinephrine is administered via the umbilical venous catheter or in the tracheal tube. Umbilical catheter can be used if the IV line difficult to be obtained. If the heart rate is 80 and above, there is but there is a poor ventilation perfusion or weak pulse. Plasma volume expanding agent is administered at a dose of 15 ml per kg. Keep in mind, keep in mind, if your patient, as we talk about this new one in the number one, plasma expansion should not be given unless we have accepted heart rate accepted heart rate. Don't add extra fluid to the newborn with a heart rate less than 60 beats per minute. So first you issue the heart rate more than 80 and there is no response or perfusion. At that time you can add fluid. You can add fluid. And the last action regarding growth station, drugs. So drugs may be useful during growth station. We have few drugs that should be available at the emergency room of delivery. Of course, these drugs used I, by pediatrician in the emergency room. Sodium bicarb, two milliequivalent per kg should be reserved until it is clear that a metabolic, metabolic acidosis exists. Important to assess this possibility. Don't give excellent sodium bicarbonate because you may change this metabolic acidosis to metabolic alkalosis. And this make more hypoxic of the tissues, hypoxia of the tissues. Why? Because in metabolic alkalosis, we have a lot of attachment between the hemoglobin and oxygen. So less oxygen delivered to the tissue. So what we call hemoglobin dissociation curve will be turned to the left. That means less oxygen delivered to the tissues. So be careful to give sodium bicarb more than usual. Nalexon, this should be available in the emergency room. The dose, 120 milligram per kg, may be helpful for poor spontaneous respiratory effort, second to the maternal narcotic use during labor. And that's why we say you should take a detailed labor history. If the mother take narcotics during labor, you expect that newborn may suffer from Central depression with weak and effective breathing. Nalexon is contraindicated in infant born to mother who is addicted to the narcotics. Here, the child may be used to be Next one is contraindicated infant born to mother who is indicated because the newborn 
all the time used its physiological adaptation to deal with as such chronic narcotic usage. So naloxone here not effective. Dopamine, of course, dopamine should be used by well-trained hand because this may affect the myocardium if not given in a well-trained hand. 5 to 20 microgram per kg per minute should be used, should be used. Up to this point, we finish the first lecture regarding the newborn, and this is considered to be introduction to the definition of the newborn and how to receive a such a problem and how to save and how to save this new human being to be to be a normal person in the future normal person in the future okay so any question?